Hello again everybody, welcome to the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got a massive preview of the Kilmarnock game to go through and lots of other stuff to go through. Let's bring in, let's bring in John right away. How are you doing, John? I'm good, eh? I was watching the Aberdeen game there. Uh, Dundee, missing the penalty. You know, if I was raging with that, I just hit it right at the keeper. Yeah, Aberdeen getting their three points, puts them three points clear of us at the top of the league going into Sunday's game. So, three points essential. Uh, John, let's let me go through some housekeeping first. The competition, obviously, we're looking for the correct score again with any scorer to win a metal wall plaque. One guess each end of the comments. More than one correct entry that goes to a draw, so good luck with that, everybody. Uh, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well, please, and put on your notification bell. You get a notification when a, whenever there's a podcast up and running. All right, John, that's enough of that. Um, just a couple of wee things I wanted to just run through, John, before we go any further. This minute silence at the game tomorrow. Um, what we don't want is to give the BBC or any other channel an excuse to drag Celtic through the mud, John. So what we're hoping for is the Celtic fans, you know, to stay silent for that minute so that it doesn't give the BBC or any of these media outlets, John, a chance to drag Celtic Football Club through the mud. Uh, let's just hope the Celtic fans uh, do the minute silence. I well, I hope so. Um, like it's it's the same every. I, what's the minute silence for? I'm thinking it's for the poppy thing. Yeah, Memorial. poppy day thing. Remembering Sunday, John. Aye, aye, aye. I thought that. But uh, aye, uh, like Celtic fans, most of them observe it every year anyway, so that should be okay. But, you know, if they hear one boo or anything like that, it'll be all over every paper and every, new, every news outlet. We know that. We know that's what happens. But uh, So we can only ask any fans that listen to this to observe it and don't give the media any chance to drag the club through the dirt. That's it, John. I was listening to BBC. You know, I've got a few things about the BBC the day to go through. I don't know why I listened to it because it just annoys me. Um, Derek Ferguson, John. He was at a lower league game the day, and he said that the minute silence gave him goosebumps. You know, a minute silence giving you goosebumps. Come on, Derek, get a grip, son. Um, yeah, John, we just need to observe it and uh, don't let, don't give them any excuse. I don't want my club, you know, getting any bad press whatsoever, especially a team that's playing so well just now. We don't need any bad press. So, uh, we've all got our own feelings about it, John. That's oh, that's that's personal how people feel about it. Uh, but all I would say is don't don't bring the club, you know, down by giving these media outlets a chance to drag us through the mud, as I've already said, John. All right, let's move on. Um, the European fixtures, John, in midweek, right? We had Celtic beating uh, a superb Leipzig team, John, 3-1. Brilliant performance, brilliant result. Uh, everybody's on a high after that. We had Hearts with their 2-0 loss at home to the Germans as well. So, you know... Celtic are flying the flag for, for Scotland and Europe, aren't they? And obviously, Rangers got their respectable one each draw against Olympiacos under 16s, John. So, yeah, John, Celtic flying the flag for the Scottish teams in Europe. <laughs> under 16s. <laughs> uh, there, there are a lot of youngsters playing in their team, Olympiacos. Look, they've got a lot of good players, Olympiacos. They've got good players, but the team itself is a riddle of shit. Have absolutely no shape whatsoever. I know we're not here to talk about that, but I watched the game. I'm just putting my point across with my comment, what I thought of it. Good players, good individual players with absolutely no shape to the team. And the final third, they, all they did was kept giving the ball away in the final third. Couldn't they get a cross in? Couldn't they get a pass away? Uh, and they left themselves vulnerable in this. Because they didn't shape to their team. There's big gaps over the park. Any team would, would have exploited it, you know. But uh, that's my opinion of that team. Good individual players with absolutely no shape to the team whatsoever. Very poorly managed. Yeah, yeah. they sold all their main players in the summer, so they had to rely on under-16s and under-17s, John. So, uh, yeah, that, that's it. That wraps up the Europe anyway, John. Celtic flying, brilliant result, and uh, poorer fortunes or mixed fortunes, if you like, for the other clubs in Europe. So... That's it. We've touched on that, John. Uh, but staying with that, Leanne Crichton on the BBC, John writes, she says she was so proud of the Celtic lads against Leipzig. 
But then she had to go on and explain herself why she was proud. How no stop there? How no stop there? We're proud. I'm proud of Celtic the way they played. I'm proud, I'm proud of the club. She had to go on and explain why she was proud of Celtic. You know, going on about Scotland, going on about, you know, coefficient, going on about all different things. Um, she doesn't need to explain herself, John. If, if she's proud of Celtic, just leave it at that. I, I don't listen to the BBC, so I'd, 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 is that is that the last day it's on? Uh, I think she used to play for Glasgow City or something. Yeah, I think she did, John. Yeah, I've still got a clue. I think I know who you're talking about, though. Um, aye, there's no need. I mean, if, she, if she's proud of the team, just say you're proud of the team. I mean, look, I was listening to Alan McCoy the other night there, and uh, he's just he made me cringe with embarrassment. To be honest with you, I was actually cringing, you know, screwing up your face. Like, oh, you def- listen to this guy, man. He's no shame whatsoever in what he says. So why should anybody else be any different? Just let everybody uh, know what you are. If you're a Celtic fan, let them know. I'm talking about media people here. <laughs> don't hide the fact because uh, Rangers fans don't hide it. No, John, they don't hide it. No, they don't, and they never have done. So um, why do the people that support Celtic, I want Celtic to do well, why do they try and have to hide it or explain themselves in five-minute you know, explanations, John? Um, it's, it's pathetic, it really is. Uh, we'll get to the preview of the command game in a minute, folks. We're just running through some uh, stuff that happened last week and some news that's going on just now as well. Ron, Brendan Rogers, John, confident that Greg will sign a contract extension, so that's good news. If the manager's confident, then we should be confident as well, Greg Taylor. Aye, uh, I know his contract runs runs out in uh, the winter, I think it's uh, January or something like that. So, aye, that needs to get done pronto. Yeah, John, his contract runs out in July, but he's free to speak to other clubs in January, you're right. Um, so we could lose him in January if we don't sign him up before then. So we've still got a couple of months uh, to get Greg Taylor signed up on a, a longer-term deal, John, an extension. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was Matt O'Reilly, John, back playing tonight for Brighton. Last time I heard it was one each for Man City. Uh, Matt O'Reilly started the game, John, so it's good to see Matt O'Reilly. Riley, uh, he's, he's got through his injuries, horror tackle, John, and he's back playing, so that's good news for him. It is. It's very good news for Matt, and we wish him all the best. Uh, I hope he just enjoys a successful career down there. I can't see it, though. He's not going to have much success playing for Brighton. He's not going to win anything. But... Uh, There'll be big clubs with their eyes on him when they see how good a player he is because he's uh, he's worthy of a, a move to one of the top teams down there, in my opinion. Mm, of course he is, John. He's an outstanding talent. Uh, so good, good luck to him anyway, John. I just thought the Celtic supporters maybe be interested in, to hear that Matt's uh, back playing football, John. He's off the treatment table and he's back on the football field and that's all we're looking for. So good luck to Matt O'Reilly. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say, John Bernabe, you know, he's still a Celtic player, of course, but he's absolutely flying in Brazil, playing for Independent, John. He's on loan, obviously, still a Celtic player. But, John, he's getting rave reviews down there, you know, he's, and I'm talking, there's people in Brazil saying that he's possibly the best left-back playing in the Brazilian league just now. That's high praise indeed, isn't it? It certainly is. I mean, I like Bernabe. I've said time and time again, I like Bernabe. Maybe, maybe he's just one of these players. He's no took his chance when he's had it, but you can see he's got a lot of ability. But I, I like him, and, and it's good that he's getting the kind of reviews. If he's getting that kind of complimentary stuff, says about him, then I'd get a twenty million pound price tag thrown on him. <laughs> if you think he's that good, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. John, the more the merrier. But he's still a Celtic player, so. But we'll keep an eye on that one. We really will uh, on January to see if he, he signs a permanent deal with them or not. And it'll be interesting to see how, how much he does go for as well, John Bernabe. But yeah, he's playing well, so good luck to him as well. Still a Celtic lad, isn't he? Okay, a uh, couple of results, John. Um, biggest defeat of the week. We've done that for a wee while, John, because I forgot, to be honest with you, I forgot all about it. Biggest result of the week or biggest defeat of the week. We had Burnley 12, Spenny Moore 0. That was in the Ladies' FA Cup. So, so far, the result goes to Spennymoor. 
And we also had John Ipswich, 12. Milton Keynes, Dons, Nil and the Ladies FA Cup as well. So we have a tie this week with MK Dons Ladies and Spenny Moore Ladies, John, both getting beat 12 none. So that's your uh, biggest defeat of the, the week. The biggest defeat of the week. <laughs> so that's Spen- the, the Spenny Moore Ladies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, uh, I know Spenny Moore pretty well, actually. I used yeah. to, uh, when I was d- down there, yeah. Uh, Working down England years ago, we used to stay with a woman in Spennymore. Uh, I think she's passed away now, actually. Uh, I don't want to mention her name or anything, but I think she's, sadly she's passed away. She used to like to stay in her house down there. Stayed there for a, for quite a lot of times, you know, and uh, lovely women used to cook your dinners and all that, Xander. Uh, big, hearty dinners, you know. No Spennymore's yeah. in uh, the northeast England. Yeah. A nice place, spending more. I, 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 I know pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the ladies' team are struggling, John. They're out there, FA Cup against Burnley. Another one was Milton Keynes Don. So it goes to a tie this week. Biggest defeat of the, the week. Biggest defeat of the week. All right, John. Okay, a couple of read results. I want to flash through before we get to the massive preview, John. Massive after, after Aberdeen getting that win earlier on. So, um, Celtic ladies. John, uh, they play in the Champions League in midweek, Wednesday, 8 o'clock kickoff against, as I say, Chelsea, but it's at home, so yeah, we'll keep a close eye on that one. Good luck to the Celtic ladies who won 5 nothing in midweek against Queen's Park. So good preparation there going into the Chelsea game. It is. Uh, I think the game's at Celtic Park as well, so um, I hope a decent wee crowd show up for them. Yeah, I'm sure the, the Celtic support will turn up for the ladies, John. So, uh, another one to watch with interest in it, the Celtic ladies in the Champions League. Bruni watch this week, John. Bruni, you know. It's Bruni watch. And then this weekend, a one each draw with Air United against Morton away from home. Decent point, John, but he's slipping down, down the table, isn't he, Bruni? But, you know, that's a really good point against uh, Morton. So, Air United in fourth position in the league just now, John. It's um, Bruni Watch. Word on Bruce, who we play next in the Champions League. They play Anderlecht on Sunday night. So if MD wants to see how they're getting on, they play Anderlecht. And a, a tough one for Bruce there against Anderlecht. Um, hey, John, you ready to do this big preview? Come on, what game? Aye. Okay, let's do it, John. Three o'clock kickoff on Sky Sports. We all know that, obviously, because we're all looking forward to it. Nick Walsh, he's the referee, he's the man in the middle. Nick is in the middle. And Don Robertson, he is on the VAR. So that's your officials for the game, John. Plastic pitch, John, I mentioned it at the very start. You know, we went there to win the league last season, 4 nothing. Very comfortable, brilliant performance with Celtic last season there. Uh, great atmosphere. Just goals, goals, goals. We're looking for the same on Sunday, basically. We certainly are. Uh, it's going to be a tough game. The plastic pitch, like you say, I hope it's uh, a wee bit of drizzle, at least, to keep the pitch wet. Make it a wee bit faster for the Celtic players. But uh, it's always a tough game at Kamarnock. Always a tough game. I know the last time we won the league there, it was a bit of a walk in the park, really, wasn't it? But uh, this time around, it's early in the season. Points to be fought for. Kamarnock, they'll be up for the battle. So, got to be aware. Yeah, uh, sorry, John, you broke up there. But the Kamarnock, since they beat Rangers, they've lost two and won one, John, one, one, if you know what I mean. They beat Hearts, didn't they? Two, one at Tyne Castle. And then they've, they've had two defeats. Um, the most recent one being against Dundee last weekend, 3 2, losing a 2 nothing lead. So mixed fortunes for Kamarnock going into this one, John. Um, but as you say, they're a solid, decent enough team. Um, players to watch, John, we always do this, no matter who we're playing, players to watch. Obviously, Big Vassell, John, Big Vassell ripped Rangers to shreds when Kamarnock beat them, beat them last month. Uh, so he's definitely wanting to watch Big Vassell up front. He always is. He's a big, strong player, big, physical, strong player. So, I right, we've got to be aware of him. I've got a few decent players, Kamarnock. And uh, Derek McInnes. He's always got his team battling, no matter who they're playing. He'll have his team fighting. They're at home. It's on that horrible plastic pitch. Um, I'm not saying Kamarnock will fancy their chances, but 
And they maybe look at that and think uh, Celtic don't like playing on this pitch. So go out there and give it a go and see what happens. Yeah, give it a go, see what happens. Yeah, but it's Celtic. It's that's at Rugby Park, John. It's you know after after a brilliant performance in midweek against you know the Germans, John. That was uh, Celtic are going to be on, on a high. But we'll continue with Kamarnock for the time being. Uh, players to watch: Matty Kennedy, also a decent player. Matty, and he's he's a decent player for them. And Armstrong as well, John, who didn't do much against Rangers, but he's always one to watch. Daniel Armstrong. I like Armstrong. I think he's a half decent wee winger. I do like him. I've said that to you before. Uh, I don't know. Still got a few. I can't remember the names of the players off the top of my head, but I have got a, a lot of half decent players in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's the ones to watch, John. That's the ones that stand out for me. Injury news for both teams. Let's start with Celtic. No injury news, no injury concerns. Everybody's honky dory. Moving on to Kamarnock, we've got. Josh McGuinness, he's out. Polworth, he's out as well. And Finlay, all out, John. Three players out uh, of this one. So they've got a few injuries, a few concerns. Uh, but I don't think it really matters, John. It doesn't matter who they've got out, who they've got fit and available. They always give us a very tough game. As you said, that plastic pitch, John, how much a part do you think that's going to play tomorrow? It always plays a part. Uh, players are scared to tackle on it. It's just Get, this is the last season with that pitch it's getting ripped up after this season which is good but I, it's look, we're going to have to go and play in the worst pitch on earth but the, the last time we went there the job was done very convincingly it was an easy win for Celtic they totally dominated that game uh, Celtic high in confidence of course after that midweek result so I, it's, look, it's going to be a tough game for Kamarnock as well so uh Celtic players will be right up for it, I think. That's going to give the Celtic players a huge lift. And, of course, they know they need to win. It's a must-win game with Aberdeen sitting top right now. So, aye, must-win game. And there's an international break after this. So, we certainly don't want to be getting into that on the back of a defeat or a draw, Zander. Yeah, John, a draw is no use now. A draw is no use we don't want to be giving our Glasgow rivals any confidence either, John, about thinking about coming back into this title race by dropping points on Sunday. Uh, and obviously, I don't think it's going to happen. You don't think it's going to happen. Celtic are absolutely flying. Let's have a wee look at the betting, John. The Dundee game last week, uh, Dundee were 28-1 to to get the win at Celtic Park, if you remember. Kamarnock are 8-1 to to beat Celtic on Sunday, John. So 8-1 to Kamarnock, 4-1 to the draw. And one to three a Celtic win. So still really hot favourites, John. I think the bookmakers are possibly looking at the the surface, you know, the fact that Kamarnock just recently beat Rangers there. They might be taking all that into account, but eight to one is still a massive price, especially at home. Well, that's that's the reason why it's eight to one and no twenty eight to one, because it's at home. And because of the previous like you say, the previous result against Rangers as well. At Rugby Park, so it's a hard place to go. The bookies know that it's a hard place to go. They know teams don't like playing on that pitch, but uh, I I can see why they've lowered the odds considerably for that game. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's enough of the betting, John. We don't want to do too much on that gamble responsibly, folks. Um, we used to do all sorts on the betting. Remember, John, correct scores, first goal scorers, all sorts. But no, we just narrowed it down to just the outright winner pricing. Uh, okay, Celtics players to watch, John. I know the full squads players to watch, but let's run through some of the dilemmas for facing Brendan Rogers, John. So you've got Alex Valley and Greg Taylor. He's got a decision to make there. He's got a decision with Liam Scales as well, John. I think does he start Liam or does he go with the two American centre backs? What other you know dilemmas has he got? Does he start with Ida Kyogo? These are all questions, John, that only the manager knows, obviously. Uh, Nicholas Kuhn, I'm, I'm sure he's going to start. And Maida, I'm sure he's going to start as well. Palmer, John, I think he's nowhere near it now, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and then you've got the, the, the midfield as well. Bernardo, is it going to be Bernardo? Is it going to be Hitati? Is it going to be Engels, John? It's just there's dilemmas all over the park because everybody is on form just now for Celtic. They certainly are. Uh, it's di- a di- dilemma for Brendan um, because the ones that's coming off the bench are playing brilliant as well. So I, it's a big dilemma, but 
I think he's going to go for the strongest possible team because it's three points needed to uh, go back to the top of the league. And Brendan's no want to get into this international break second in the league. Definitely not. No, and we'll go through who we think is going to get picked in a wee minute when we do our predicted 1-11. to 11. You know, why Why should they rotate the team, John, after a, a performance and a result we got against Leipzig? Because as you said as well, John, there's an international break coming up, so the players are going to get a rest for the ones that are not playing any international football anyway. They're going to get that rest. And even the players that go away on international duty, John, doesn't mean to say they're going to play these games, so... Yeah, play your strongest team, John. I totally agree with you there. It's got to be the strongest possible team to beat Kamarnock. And they'll be hurting after, you know, their 3-2 loss to Dundee last weekend. 2 nothing up the world, John Dundee. Three late goals. It's a pity Dundee couldn't do that the night against Aberdeen. As you say, missing that penalty. You know, nothing each as well, John. Missing a penalty at nothing each. Bang on half-time. It's absolutely criminal, that, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but as what it is, John, we, we can only do what we can do. And that's uh, beat Kamarnock at Rugby Park. That's all we can try and do. Predicted 11, John. Um, this is this is tough because if he goes with the same team that beat the Germans, then that's our strongest team, isn't it, John? But do you think there's going to be any tweaks? What are you thinking, buddy? It's uh, a hard one to call, isn't it? But I think the centre-backs are going to stay the same. I think it's going to be trusty in skills. Taylor and Johnson, McGregor, Ingles and Hitati. The one change you might see is up front, they might put Adam Eder on because Commander are a big physical, te- physical team. So you might see him getting a start. Eder. Yeah. Where uh, Maida and Kuhn. Yeah, Maida and Kuhn, John. Um, the, the big man's just... Uh, He's choking to start these games, isn't he? But I mean, you've got Wee Kyogo who, okay, he's not finding the net as often as, as he usually does, but, it, you know, the effort uh, Kyogo puts in, John, that running about, that chasing down, and the, the front three all do it, John, together, in tandem, if you like, you know, shutting down, you know, three on one, you know, closing down, even the midfield gets involved as well. So I, I don't think he'll change it. I think he'll stick with uh, Kyogo. Um, but I think you're going to see scales starting, John. I think um, I think instead of Trusty, he's going to start with scales and Catler Vickers again, John. Obviously, none of us know anything. We're just giving our thoughts just now. But I think um, I think he's going to rotate the defence, John, the three centre backs. No idea. I've got no idea. But I'll tell you something: scales never deserve to get dropped for the team anyway. He's never done anything wrong, really. I know he got exposed for pace with the second Aberdeen goal at Celtic Park. But that's it. Apart from lacking a bit of pace, he's every bit as good as Austin Trusty. Every single bit as good as him. Possibly better. He's the best passer the ball for a defender at Celtic. He gets forward as well. So um, I think he can feel harshly treated getting dropped for the team. But I'd be more than happy to see Big Liam starting. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll wait and see what the lineup's going to be to have to on Sunday, John. But yeah, it's interesting. Although, in saying that, let's have a wee word on the two American centre backs, John. What a performance they're putting against Leipzig. I know I've already spoken about it, but you know, nothing, you know, nothing got past them in the, the game before that against Aberdeen. And it was a different level, level of opposition against Leipzig, John. And they were still formidable together, the two American lads. Aye, I, I thought the two of them were outstanding. No problem at all with any of them there. Uh, Carter Vickers set up the goal, didn't he? He's wee header to the back post. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. But, but solid performers, the two of them. Um, I've just got a feeling that Tr- Trusty's going to be the the number one left centre back in the Zander. Yeah. You know, do you think there's going to be quite, quite a bit of rotation, John? Or do you think he's going to just be bringing scales on uh, substitute appearances from now on? Um, I personally think he's going to rotate it, give each centre-half a wee, a wee chance at it all through the, the rest of this season, John. Um, but you think he's going to stick with the two uh, two American lads? I think for this game, aye. I think he's going to stick with trusty and scales. 
for this game, I'm not saying he's not going to rotate it, but definitely for this game, I think it's going to be trusty in skills. Trusty's taller than skills. He's about six feet five. Trusty, I think. Six four, six five. Uh, solid enough in there. Half decent passer of the ball. Uh, makes a good ground challenge as well. So I think he's going to start with him. But like I say, I think Liam can find himself unfortunate because he's every bit as good a defender. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, John, you broke up again there. Um, okay, let's move on for the defence, John. Nicholas, have a wee word on Nicholas. What a performance that boy put in against the Germans. And what we are looking for, I know it's a different surface, John. It's a different game. It's a different stadium. But we are just looking for the exact same performance with Nicholas. Aye. It's easier said than done, isn't it? Performing like that every game. But I, I think he'll be up for it. He'll be on fire right now. He'll be dying to get on that part and show what he can do again. Because against Leipzig, it was unplayable. And I, th- I don't think he'll be disheartened to uh, begin back to the mundane league stuff on a plastic pitch. He doesn't care. He'll he'll want to go there and show everybody how good he actually is. And he's getting better and better by the game. So he's he's a dead cert to start. Yeah. Okay, John. All right, that wraps it up then. So we're more or less saying it's the same team, uh, but you're saying it's going to be Vickers and Trusty, and I'm saying it's Scales and Trusty. Apart from that, it's the same team. All right, John. All right, so the big score prediction then, the one we've all been waiting for. Uh, obviously, nobody's got the competition right in uh, three or four weeks now, John. It's, uh, it's becoming worrying. <laughs> um, it's no easy getting a score prediction, we know that, but we've made it more difficult rather than any time goal scorer as well. John, but what's your prediction for this one? I'm thinking... I'm going to go for another 4-0. Four 4-0. Four yeah, the defence is solid, isn't it, John? We're not conceding many just now. Uh, I'll say 3-0 then, John. I'll go to 3. You're going to 4. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't care as long as we get the 3 points, especially now, John. Especially now, we, uh, you know, that result with Aberdeen and Dundee, you know, Aberdeen bouncing back quite well, to be fair to them, John, beating Dundee after Celtic beating them 6 nothing. I have, like I say, I was watching that game. I thought Dundee were really good the first half, but obviously Aberdeen blew them, blew them away in the second half. Yeah. Different story, though. Yeah, yeah, they blew them away, John, but, you know... Yes, they're, they're, they're still a good team, Aberdeen. You've got to remember that, John. They're, you know, they're, and that's them now 12 points ahead of Rangers, John, which you, which you forget about. You know, it's you know, we're concentrating on Aberdeen just now. Obviously, Rangers have got a very, very tough game against Hearts, but obviously, it's at Ibrox. You know, they come back from Europe and have another home game uh, against Hearts. It's one that Rangers will probably win. We'll go through the predictions in a wee minute, but um. John, we're coming back up off our European tie as well, so we're hoping that doesn't affect us. And that was a lot of effort we're putting against Leipzig. It was a huge effort, but you know the players have had four days to rest, so I think the players will be more than ready for this one. They'll feel refreshed after four days rest, so aye, they'll be good to go, Zander. Mm, right, okay, John. Okay, that wraps it up. You know, Derek McInnes, he'll be sending these boys out to battle and win every ball against Celtic uh, but we're not going to expect anything less for Derek McInnes you know as you say John he'll try against Celtic and Rangers you know he's a, he's a manager that wants the best for his team but you know we're Celtic John we, we've got it in us to destroy come on let's be honest um, it's just the usual stuff in the uh, European game John lots of effort that plastic pitch or, you know everything else you know um, but get an early goal get that early goal and I think it more or less Puts command to bed um, and we can relax if we get an early goal as well. All right, John, let's run through some of the scores today. It was Dungeon United 3, Ross County now a good win for Dungeon United there. We had Hibs 1, St Mirren 2, John. Hibs are in a bad way just now. I have watched that game. Hibs are pretty poor. They, were, they can count themselves, unfortunately, actually, because they get a goal chopped off at the end. And I thought it was harsh. The player is 
probably you could say interfering with play if the ball touched him. If it did touch him, it's came off his shirt and nothing else because the guy absolutely smashed it into the net. And he's tried to get out of the way, you know, the boy that's standing there. Yeah. He's tried to, tried to get out of the way. And there's no way he can get out of the way the power that was put into that shot. So he could find himself very unfortunate to get that chopped off because Hibs were losing 2 0 up until the 94th minute. Yeah, I mean, what a comeback that would have been, John, you know. But, you know, it was Mirren to get the point, so well done to them. Motherwell 2, St Johnston 1, so Motherwell back on winning ways after their no show against Rangers in the semi final. And then one other result, John, we had uh, the B team. Earlier on, beating Broxburn 5-1. Uh, so, well done to Celtic B team. Celtic B team 5, Broxburn 1. A good one for the, the, the under-21s or the reserves, if you like, uh, there. Uh, tomorrow, John, we have Hearts against Rangers or Rangers against Hearts, since it's the Ibrox. What's your wee prediction there, buddy? don't know. I, I've watched the, the Rangers game, then I've watched the Hearts game. Uh a, a tough one to call. Two teams just back from Europe, of course. They never get great results in Europe, both of them, but uh, they've only had a couple of days rest. So you might see some changes in their teams. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm going to say 2-1 Rangers. 2-1 Rangers, John. Yeah, the head says that. Then to the head says that they're going to win Ibrox, especially against their younger brothers. But I'm going to go a draw there, John. I'm, the new manager, you know, that new manager bounce. They played well in midweek in Europe or unlucky again against a uh, more stylish opposition, if you like. So, yeah, I think they're going to get a draw, John. I don't know what the score's going to be, but I think it's going to be a draw. Two each, one each, something like that. I'll go for one each because um, I think Rangers, you know, they really are struggling. As soon as Rangers come up against anything that's, anything, sorry, that's semi-decent, John, they struggle. Aye, that team they were playing in midweek weren't the same decent. They were terrible. Honestly, they were. Th- I'm not just saying that because Rangers got a point, but I was watching them and I was thinking that's the worst organisation of a team I've ever seen in my life. Good players that they've got. Organisation out the window. Absolutely terrible. Big gaps everywhere over the park. And they couldn't, in the final third, they couldn't pick a pass. Uh, so they got exploited for that. Uh, I just think they were that uh, Olympia, of course, really poor teams under. Really, yeah. really poor. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, okay, John. Fair enough. That's uh, We've covered that. We'll give our predictions as well. Um, Malkin Days, wish Celtic all the best on Sunday. Um, and we just hope that Celtic fans, you know, I know 98% of them do the the minute silence on Remembrance Sunday. So we hope that other 2%, you know, do it as well. Um, we all have our own personal views on it. I'm not going to mention mine. John's not going to mention his. But just do it for the club. Just be silent for Celtic. Do it for the Celtic Football Club. And don't let these media outlets drag us through the mud, as I said at the very start of the show. So, uh, OK, John, a wee final sum up for you, buddy. Uh, just go there and win, win, win. That's it. I not see any more than that. Oh, man, it's just a nice wee one, a nice easy afternoon. I think the boys will be up for it. There's no going to be any complacency here. They know they need to win. So there'll be a, a lot of fight in the Celtic players knowing that they need to win to get back to the top of that league. That's what we've got to really bear in mind. They know they have to win that to go back to the top of the league. So they'll take this game very seriously, Xander, and the players will be ready for it. Brendan will make sure of that. Yeah, yeah, you're right, John. Yeah. Um... Vital three points now. It's turned into vital three points, John. It uh, always is vital, as you say, but you know, even more so now rather than getting that result. So, OK, good luck to the lads. Good luck to the lads on Sunday. It's going to be a good game. Oh, come on, always make it a good game down at Rugby Park. Um, one may we mention the competition before we go, Fox, because no many entries are on the, the YouTube. Uh, correct score, Fox. Command versus Celtic. One guess each in the comments. We're also looking for any goal scorer in the match as well so get your two guesses into the comments goal scorer and correct score um and if there's more than one correct entry it goes to a prize draw to win the metal wall plaques the legends wall plaques um i've got them all lying there i've not gave any away in four weeks so folks get you get your entries into the comments section 
All right, John, we'll be back for the post-match, possibly on Monday, maybe Sunday. We don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. Um, just turn on your notification bell. You'll get a no- notification when that podcast is out. Um, but uh, we've been a wee bit more detail with the, the post-match because we'll start to do some comments and stuff as well. Um, just don't have the time for that to, tonight. Um, all right, John, thanks for coming on, pal. And we'll catch you for the post-match. Catch you later, Sander. He'll heal, mate. He'll heal, buddy. Thank you.